Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. We're now onto our third layer, looking at the histology of the gastrointestinal tract. What we've spoken about so far is if we look at the hollow inside of the tube that extends from our mouth to our anus, we've got the first layer, which is actually made up of three individual layers, called the mucosal layer. We have epithelia, then connective tissue called lamina propria, then a thin muscle layer called the muscularis mucosa. The next layer is another connective tissue layer that contains blood vessels, nerve fibers, and lymphatics, and that's called the submucosa. And importantly, it's got a certain nerve plexus present within there. And this nerve plexus tells this smooth muscle and the glands of the epithelia to secrete their enzymes and change the diameter of that hollow inside and also tell the blood vessels to change their diameter as well in the mucosa. But now we're going for this third layer and this third layer you can see is made up of two muscle layers. Both are called the muscularis externa together but what you'll find is the deepest layer is a circular smooth muscle layer. So when you've got the hollow tube, you're gonna have a muscle layer that wraps around the hollow tube. So when it contracts, it narrows the inside of that tube. That's called the circular muscle. The next one is longitudinal muscle that goes the length of the hollow tube. And when that contracts, it shortens the tube. So what that means is when it comes to gastrointestinal tract motility, moving stuff from proximally to distally, what do these two particular muscle groups do? Okay. Firstly, if you look at the circular smooth muscle, it narrows the lumen, makes it larger, narrows, makes it larger. That means it's really important in mixing the food. It actually can segment the food. By doing this, it segments the food and mixes the food. You'll also find that in areas where this circular smooth muscle is thickened, it forms the sphincters. And you're gonna have sphincters at the lowest part of the esophagus, which is the top of the stomach, called the cardiac sphincter. You're also gonna find one at the bottom of the stomach going into the small intestines, called the pyloric sphincter. And you're also gonna find uh, two very important sphincters right at the very end of this entire tube, the internal and external anal sphincter. The longitudinal muscle, well, when it contracts, it shortens the tube, which means it helps push food along. The movement of foodstuffs through the GIT is called peristalsis. And that's important because of this longitudinal muscle layer. Now what tells this muscle to contract? Because muscle needs nerves to innovate it to tell it to contract. Well, there's another plexus. Remember what I said plexus is? Plexus is just like a braiding of nerves. There's another plexus of nerves here that sit between the circular and longitudinal muscles. And they're called the myenteric plexus, also known as the Auerbach's plexus. Now, this Auerbach or myenteric plexus is really important because again, it tells the circular smooth muscle to contract, it tells the longitudinal muscle to contract. Now a couple of other important points. When we look at the esophagus, the most proximal one third, so the top one third is skeletal muscle, which means you consciously control it, which means you consciously control the first third of your esophagus. That's going to be swallowing. Then you've got the next third, which is the middle third. That's actually a mixture of skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. And then the bottom third you'll find is just smooth muscle, which means you do not control it. So there's this reflex system, which when you open up the esophagus, when food goes into and it stretches it at the proximal end, it triggers peristaltic waves to transmit down the esophagus and push the food stuff down, okay? Another important point when it comes to the muscularis externa, the circular and longitudinal, is when we get to the stomach, we don't just have these two layers, we've actually got three muscle layers, an additional muscle layer called the oblique muscle layer. And you can see I've got the stomach and I took some sections out. So we've got the oblique muscle layer, then we've got the circular muscle layer, then we've got the longitudinal muscle layer. Why does the stomach have an additional muscle layer? Because the stomach doesn't just release enzymes to digest food. It's not just a pit that sits there waiting for food to ferment inside. That's not what happens. The stomach is a dynamic organ. It moves, it shifts around. What you'll find is because of these three muscle layers, the stomach can jackknife in upon itself. It can squeeze, it can shift and jackknife. And this is important for chemical and more specifically, mechanical digestion. So this is the muscularis externa layer. This is the third layer of the GI, layer of the GIT.